Accidental blunt force trauma. Today, the medical examiner released details surrounding the death of freshman Dylan Hernandez after attending a fraternity party at SDSU. It is a story we've been following closely. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Mark Mullen. I'm Catherine Garcia. So the autopsy says Dylan succumbed to head injuries. It states that he fell from his top bunk bed and that his roommate helped him back in bed only to find Dylan later that morning without a pulse. Hernandez was pronounced dead on Friday. Meanwhile, in response to his death, SDSU's president says she is starting two task force groups, one focusing on student safety with an emphasis on fraternity and sorority life, the other on alcohol and substance abuse. The president admits SDSU is facing a substance abuse problem and says it is committed to fixing it with these task forces. Results from the task forces are expected back in mid-2020. More than 24,000 people were left without power today in the college area. Because of one bird, the power outage was reported around noon. SDG&E says the bird came in contact with a substation near 54th and Choyas Parkway. The outage caused quite a headache for a lot of people as it forced several schools and businesses around San Diego to close for the day. Most of the power was restored by 7 o'clock in the evening, but a few thousand people are still waiting for the lights to turn back on. Wednesday morning, thousands of University of California service and patient care workers are expected to strike, including here in San Diego. Unhappy employees say they are concerned over new allegations tied to the university system's outsourcing of practices and the lack of disclosure. Protests are planned on all UC campuses starting at 8 in the morning, including in front of Jacobs Medical Center at UC San Diego. A sad development in the case of a man attacked outside of 7-Eleven in Rolando a week ago today. We now know that man who was knocked unconscious with a wrench has died. George Almastar has been in a coma, but his family confirmed he did pass away from his injuries on Saturday night. A GoFundMe page has been set up to help pay for funeral expenses. You can find a leak, link at NBC7.com. A family of three people is displaced after a fire broke out in their Pacific Beach garage. The fire started around 4 in the morning while the family was sleeping. Flames did spread from the garage to a car in the driveway, but firefighters were able to put the fire out quickly when they got there. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Time for a look at your first alert forecast. Here's Dagmar. So for your Wednesday, we have a bit of a switch up in there. A few more clouds in the mix. Partly cloudy to partly sunny on and off. Sometimes mostly cloudy, sometimes mostly sunny. The coast, you'll be in the low 70s on average. Inland valleys, you'll still be seeing right around that upper 70 mark, maybe the low 80s. Mountains, upper 60s into the low 70s. And the deserts, you're going to hang tight at around that mid 80 mark. Again, everybody's seeing partly cloudy skies. We have some higher and mid-level clouds streaming through the region. And then as we head through that first alert 10-day forecast, we'll keep you posted on our next chance for actual rain. It was a cookie breaking celebration for the upcoming Sesame Place San Diego. The Sesame Street gang along with SeaWorld representatives and Chula Vista city leaders kicked off the start of construction at the Aquatica Water Park in Chula Vista. Sesame Place will not open until spring of 2021, so Aquatica fans will have one more summer to enjoy the park as it is. Cat Hammock. So Encinitas native Cat Hammock has made it to the top 13 thanks to viewer votes. The announcement came right at the top of tonight's episode of The Voice. Yay for her. Be sure to check out Cat next week when uh, The Voice airs on NBC7 Monday and Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock. Okay, so uh, check out these photos sent in from an NBC7 viewer of a bobcat at Lake Murray at Lake, uh, at Lake Murray in Mission Trails Regional Park. Dan Playley spotted the animal around noon last Saturday. These photos are so good. We're wondering if we're getting spoofed. They're yeah. so good they look like Photoshop, but we want them to be real. <laughs> this is Bobcat in action going right to left. Look at, I mean, right? I mean, these photos are great. Um, we are told it was the size of a collie dog. It was more interested, <laughs> as opposed to a collie cat, it was more interested in relaxing and watching the birds near the water, as all cats of any size like to do. Dan says he goes there almost every weekend to take photos, but this is the first time he has seen that, a beautiful bobcat. Which is the size of a collie dog. Indeed. A collie dog, not a collie cat. That's right. If you have a great photo or story to tell us like that, we want to hear from you. Just shoot us an email to icsandiego.com. That'll do it for us. Have a terrific night.